Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Hey, so today it's going to be the uh, an oracle, four cards, you pick, and then dyadic cross uh, finish. So four four cards, oracle, you pick, and uh, we'll get that right now. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Colonnade, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially Crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with Crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to, to know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing. I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake. But you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often. At least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Tarot. So this will be good. This will be an Oracle four card. So these will be yes, no's on the uh, four card you pick. Um, so right now, the best thing you can do is to clear your mind, take a deep breath. Really come up with the uh, the question or questions that you need answers to. And then just think about, you know, which of the cards, um, you know, you can just visualize them. Here's the back of the card. You can visualize them right now before they're even late. So... Oracle four card you pick. We'll do a couple of shuffles. Let's see what kind of energy we get today for this four card oracle. Do a few sh shuffles. Uh, split the cards. Cut the cards. And then start with the divinations. Four cards for the beginning. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Put these up here, and you're going to get a chance to decide which of these is best for you. One, two, three, four. Remember, you can stop the tape, take a breath, get your question in your mind. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm trying to do something with my other hand here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now we'll put these up. And the first card, if that's the one you chose, is the Three of Wands. So the Three of Wands is, um, wow, my mind's a blank. What is the Three of Wands? Three of Wands is on my cheat sheet here, Partnerships. Ah, the Three of Wands is, of course, long-term planning. Yeah, this crow is looking out over the ocean, and now I'm getting my groove. I can feel it coming on now. This is looking out over the ocean, trying to make long-term plans. There's some turbulent uh, passions uh, in between now and when that can happen, but uh, Three of Wands is long-term planning. This is a yes. Okay, if you chose number two, so this is strength, and this just tells you this is a big yes card, but you have the strength to do what it takes to make this happen. 
So number two is telling you that uh, you are fierce. Um, there has have been some um, clever situations annoying you, but you are able to overcome this. And number two is a great big yes. You chose number three. Then this is a high priestess. So again, this is a big yes card. So we've got three yeses so far. And the high priestess comes to us with everything that she needs to know. You know, she's she's draped in all the knowledge that's available. She has a hold on the secrets. She's got a cup of compassion. She has a sword of justice. And this uh, high priestess is ready uh, to solve whatever issues are coming her way. Great big yes. And if you chose number four, this is the nine of cups, another big yes. And the nine of cups is just an overabundance. This is, look, every one of these cups is just filled to the brim with fantastic, uh, nourishing, wonderful, this is even keys, a set of keys, wonderful things that you're going to need to make your life uh, complete. So number four, if that's the one you chose, that's a big yes too. But now we'll do them each individually and see what comes up. So we're going to have the signifier of this uh, three of wands. Remember, that's long-term planning. Uh, something uh, you're going to have to get through something to get there but long term planning so number one I'm going to shuffle these just a couple of times and then I think I'm going to cut them once spread them out and we're going to see what cards uh, we get I need five of them so one two three four and five okay here we go. The challenge to this long-term planning and um, is going to be King of Pentacles. Uh, King of Pentacles talk to, speaks to us about uh, getting uh, control of our value. Could be money. Uh, could be health even. But uh, getting control of our value and get ready to spread our wings and make this thing happen. So that's a perfect companion, really, even though it's a challenge. It's a perfect companion to these long-term plans. Really grab hold of what's important. It's like grab your purse and your wallet and, and your keys and let's go. That's what the King of Pentacles is. So the uh, base of this reading is the fool. Love the fool. This is new journeys. Perfect Perfect match to this. So this is telling us we started out knowing that there was a journey ahead of us. And um, the, moving forward is always uh, a big plus. So that's fantastic. The full moving forward. Now the, um, the recent past for this uh, is, a, is the chariot. And moving forward with some speed. Okay, nothing's going to stop uh, this crow from uh, making it to its uh, destination. So love this, uh, this card for the chariot. Uh, really just flying into the future. So this is perfect. This is really a good reading. In the sky for this is the Seven of uh, Wands. And the Seven of Wands, I always want to uh, confuse this with swords, but the Seven of Wands uh, really tells us that um, there's a lot of issues that you'll need to overcome, but you're equipped to do it. You can see this uh, crow right here has a firm grip on this one, while these other crows are just really struggling to bring these issues up, these plans, uh, these problems, these emotions, up to up to a battle of this crow. But this crow's ready. As soon as something happens, he's ready to knock them down. So um, don't worry about uh, the issues that might present themselves. Okay? And then right here, I just would like all this to be nice and neat and not crooked. So, and then the final outcome for all of this then, uh, long-term plans, is uh, the Empress. So all the bounty, everything's fruitful. It's a great big, I mean, this crow is flying over the Dominion and looking down at all the fruitful uh, uh, um, bounty that uh, it has to gather at its leisure. So yeah, uh, long-term plans, um, you've got a hold of the, of the value. We knew this was coming. It's gonna come fast. The issues can be dealt with and it will be well worth uh, whatever uh, it took to get there. So that's a great big double yes on that one. I'm going to reincorporate these into the pack and then see what we get for the next card. The, um, the second card in this was strength. So great big yes card, full of strength. And uh, this tells you that uh, you've got what it takes to make this happen. Just shake your head. Uh, if anything's bothering you, shake that crow right off your nose. Uh, it's almost boring you. You can see uh, that uh, that uh, lion is uh, telling us. And so let's see what we get for strength. Five cards. It's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. There we go. Strength. Put this over here. 
do its magic with that. Get these cards ready and see what is the challenge to strength. The challenge to strength is the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is a great big offer of truth, of justice, of, of um, it could be health also. So Ace of, Ace of Swords as a challenge to strength. Let me see, how is that a challenge to strength? You've got the strength to do it, and you've got a great big so don't be don't overpower the moment. Okay, it's here. You don't you can you can uh, take this moment with some stealth, like the uh, the lion uh, would show us. So it's it's offered, get into it, and and know your strength to carry through. The base of this reading then is the seven of cups, and this is just you know, again, just a, you know, so many things that you can choose from to make this happen. So that was the basis of the reading. And if you haven't considered that you have uh, those choices, then stop for a moment and think about that. In the past of this reading is the Hierophant. So the Hierophant is always rules, uh, laws. It could be structures such as the government, uh, police structures, the church structures, religious structures, even the rules within your house. But there's the Hierophant is what brings us to this. There's some there's some structure that's brought us to the, to the fact uh, that uh, we have to have the strength to move forward, and we, we can do it. The sky of this reading, then, is the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups is partnerships. You know, it's, it's absolutely swearing an oath to someone that we will do this together. You have what I need. I have what you need. It could be an individual. It could be a, a, a business or a, an entity. But, yeah, find the partnership that you need to make this thing happen with that Two of Cups. And then the likely outcome for all of this is the King of Cups. So with lots of compassion, you will be the master of this issue with this King of Cups in a compassionate uh, uh, way. So love that for this reading. Okay, very good so far. Now we'll go to the third card. You chose number three. That was the High Priestess. High Priestess is all bountiful, um, really knowing uh, someone you would go to with a very personal, very important issue, and that's you. You're the person who is defined as a high priestess, and it's a great big yes card. So whenever this uh, issue is, try to uh, muster your strength and know that uh, whatever it is, you got it. Okay, so we're going to take five cards out of here for this high priestess. One, two, oh, okay, three, four, way over here. Five. Okay, that's great. High Priestess, the challenge to the High Priestess, in this case, then, is going to be, ah, inverted. The world inverted. And you, I don't know if you know me, I don't like inverted cards. I don't trust my intuition on the interpretation for them. But here we go. If this card were uh, upright, uh, the world card is the absolute end, end, end of a cycle. Okay, and um, and the next something else is going to happen. But for me, if it's inverted, end of a cycle, I hate to say this is exactly the opposite, but I can tell you that it's not the end of the cycle. There's another go round that needs to go around here. So while you might be close, uh, you're not quite there, and there's a little bit more to do. Don't tell me all of these are going to be inverted. They are all going to be inverted. Okay, the universe is testing me. Um, so, this is the base of the reading. And the base of the reading, in this case, would be a Ten of uh, Wands. The Ten of Wands tells us that we've got a bundle. We've got a, uh, something that we have to manage to get this done. And it's a heavy load. But we can get it. We've got a good grip on it. But when it's inverted, I would say that it's almost, um, it's almost comical, uh, the, the, the act of trying to manage all of this. And uh, I think if I was trying to do this, I would let this, this bundle fall to the ground and then go and pick them up one at a time. So I'm going to say that, that for me, this Ten of Wands, and remember, this is these are my interpretations. You might think, wow, that's completely insane, and the other readers say something else. That's fine, but this is what I've got to give to you right now. This Ten, this ten of uh, Wands is telling me this is impossible to, to manage. You've got to let them fall, and you've got to let them fall where they may, and then you've got to uh, trust yourself as a high priestess, that you can uh, choose what needs to move forward first. Let's see what this is. In the past of this reading, everything is going to be inverted. So I put all these cards over here inverted, and I'm not going to change it. Uh, if, in the past of this reading. So this was a beautiful reading if it had been upright, because this Ten of Cups is like wish fulfillment. But obviously, if it's going to be reversed, 
it is all these cups are empty and um it's it's just it's not wish fulfillment um at all it's uh, the other side of the rainbow not to say that something miraculous can't be there but it's not a big plus it's not a big plus in the sky of this reading is the inverted knight of swords if the knight of swords were upright then uh this knight is equipped and he's ready to fight for the uh royal suite okay he's coming in on a steed and he's ready to show you the truth and the justice but in this way i'm going to say that actually it feels to me like this is working in the reverse obviously um what what seems to be right is wrong what seems to be wrong is right so i would say you really have to study this issue and understand where um, the conflicts are and then the last card I'm sure this is going to be inverted also of course it is is the page of cups now if the page of cups is upright it's talking to us about surprises the page is the least powerful of the court cards and so they're going to bring them something to court that they have no idea what it is about but the court's going to have to deal with it and it could be a surprise but if this is upright I'm going to say so if this is the page in reverse um, this page I'm going to say it's probably carrying a surprise from court out of the picture. There you go. That's my interpretation. And it may not uh, be perfect, but it's what I got for you. So I'm going to go through it one more time. We started this with a big yes card as a high priestess. The world uh, is telling us that we're almost at the end of cycle, but we've got a little bit more to go to. This is an impossible bundle to carry. Let them fall. And then you have the knowledge to pick up what needs to be picked up to car carry forward. Um, it's not a uh, wish fulfillment. And um, there's there's some truth, there's some justice that's actually working against you. And um, the thing to do is to uh, let the surprise uh, come forward, uh, just much like this bundle here. Let the surprise come forward, and I think you're going to find that it all works itself upright in the end. I hope that's good for you. That's really the best I can do. And, but I do feel confident in what I'm telling you. So at least there's that. Now let's make sure I don't do this all over again. Put these in absolutely the correct way. Um, is everything correct here? Yes, it is. So now I'll turn them upside down and put them back in the stack. It's really distressing for me. Because number one, I don't take uh, giving you these readings lightly. I try to uh, uh, make sure that I feel that what I'm telling you is useful. And, um, and it, when those cards are inverted, I don't feel as if I'm giving you uh, the best. But guess what? It was free advice, wasn't it? So the four, uh, the fourth card, if that's what you chose, really just a, a, an embarrassment of riches. Everything you could want is available to you. And so that's a great big yes card. So we're going to take uh, these uh, cards right here and give them a little bit of shuffle. I'm going to give them a little bit of a cut here and spread them out and then see what we get. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, they're all out there and we're done with those cards for now. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got uh, everything we need. This is the nine of cups. Yeah. And so um, here, the challenge to that is the uh, four of coins, which is really wanting to hold on to your value, wanting to keep what you've got. So you've got all this, and the challenge is wanting to keep it. You know, when you have a bounty, you're going to, if when you share what you have, if it's knowledge, if it's wealth, if it's actual food, uh, when you share, you're going to get back more than what you gave away. You're going to get gratitude, you're going to get uh, a warm, fuzzy feeling inside, and you're going to get a, a slightly uh, advanced place in the universe. So, yeah, holding on is the challenge. Let's think about letting some of it go. Uh, the base of this reading is, yeah, partnerships. Find a partnership. It may be that you need to partnership with a community or with an organization or with an individual. That maybe that's the individual who could use some of this bounty. But uh, whatever it is, there's partnerships uh, is what started this, and um, and that's what we need to focus on right now. The um, See, if you gave all of that away, you'd still have two left. The past to this reading, then, is a hierophant. And so these are rules, government, could be the church. It could be that uh, maybe you are a very bountiful. And instead of holding on, let's find a partnership with some organization or some person who can help you make this happen. And then the sky of this reading is the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords is nightmares. And um, it's funny that this would be the sky of this reading, the nightmares. Perhaps if, if what's been happening is if you've been uh, worried about uh, losing uh, what you have. Let's put that nightmare aside 
and, uh, and, 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 and have faith that things are going to come out the way they should. And then the likely outcome for all of this, look at that, is the Empress. And it's just that. You give away a little bit, you get more than you could ever have dreamed uh, would come back your way. Love that. So that's the reading for today, the four-card oracle you pick, and I hope that gave you uh, some, uh, some guidance. So I really love that. If you pick number one, that was a big yes card. That was the uh, uh, three, of, three of wands. So yeah, future planning, get it done. If you pick number two, that was a big yes card. You've got the strength to make this happen. Just trust it. If you, you pick number three, uh, the high priestess, yeah, all the knowledge you need, everything is within you to make that uh, work. And if you pick number four, you've got an abundance that you can share. You might not even think you have an abundance that you can share, and you do. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.